So, you've all played chess before, but have you ever thought about how many rectangles there are on a chessboard? Well, I am, and here's the answer. So, okay, let's just start with the simplest case. We'll just count the one by one squares, which is literally the squares you see here. And how many of those are there? Thomas, 64. There are 64 one by one squares. And then uh, it gets hard. But you know what David Goggins says? Life gets harder, I get harder. So yeah, I'm hard as fuck. Okay, uh, how do we do this? Uh, think about it this way. If we have a shape, let's say, okay, we have it. It's four, four, time, four squares long and two squares deep what do you say so it looks like this yeah i'm not drawing anything new but you see see where i'm, where I'm holding the chalk here so two by four instead of thinking how many ways we can fit this entire thing we'll just think about in on how many squares can we fit the top left corner so okay we can obviously have it over here uh, can we have it over here though? No, because then the uh, the shape would be down here, and that we don't allow. So it can't be here, and Frank, and that means that it can't be on this row either. So it has to be on this row. And for are there any constraints that way? Well, can we have it over here? No, because then it would be like all the way over here. So the furthest to the right that we can have it is here. Okay, so the top left corner can be in these squares in this area here. And how many of those are there? Well, there's, okay, it's five times seven. So it's, there's 35. Okay, so we can just write that down. Uh, we say 35, four times two ones and what do we have here what is 35 35 is 7 times 5 and they were 68 and that was 8 times 8 and then we have a 1 1 and a 4 2 is it possible that a shape with sides say m and m okay we have it all the possible locations possible locations of a shape with size m and n is equal to 9 minus m times 9 minus n think about this for a while if you want to but it should, after a while at least, make perfect sense. Because what we have is that, okay, we restrict, we restrict the top left corner with the sizes of the shape. And if it's one wide, then it can fit anywhere. So essentially we're counting, we're not really counting the squares, more like counting the lines in between, and there's nine of them. So then it kind of makes more sense. Uh, you, you could uh, consider the top left corner. Where could the top left corner be? And consider these intersections instead. Then it kind of makes up, makes more sense because there's nine lines, and but only eight squares. So as said, we're constraining ourselves with the width and the length of the shape. So this is the formula for how many uh, how many rectangles there are of the shape m n and then 
we just have to ask ourselves, how many shapes are there? Well, it isn't, it isn't that hard to figure out. We have, the, the smallest we can do is one by one, and the biggest we can do is eight by eight. And if we just plug this in here to just check, okay, if it were, if it would be eight by eight, then we have, okay, nine minus eight to one. So we have one away. And that is obviously the entire square. The entire board is the eight by eight shape. So what do we get? Well, we get a sum. Because, okay, so we have that for every possible shape, we have P of M and N possible lo locations for every, which makes a new rectangle, one could say. So we just want to consider every possible shape. So therefore we have to consider every possible length, which is one to eight, and every possible uh, width, which is also one to eight. So, and then we just sum these up. So what do we get? We get a outside sum where m goes from 1 to 8 uh, and an inside sum because we want every single combination of n goes from 1 to 8 of P of M and N. And now, generally, a good thing to think about when you have these kinds of kinds of things is okay. Are we really counting combinations or permutations, or or what is what is it we're actually doing? So when we have this, we very much can have the case. We will both have like P of one and two but we'll also have p of 2 and 1 because they, they run through every single combination. So, and is this wrong? No, it isn't because this is just 2 by 1. That's this shape. And 1 by 2 is this shape or vice versa, whatever you, whatever you want to believe. Um, so, and this thing we knew was 9 minus m and uh, 9 minus n. So yeah, we can just write that out again. m goes from 1 to 8. And n goes from 1 to 8 of 9 minus m times 9 minus m. And here, if this seems complicated, it really, really isn't. But you have to think of it. So, sadly. So, what is this? Well, firstly, we can extract this factor from the n sum, because that has nothing to do with n. So we can move that outside. I'll do that real quick. So what is this? Okay, this is the sum of, okay, we have 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. Yeah, that's all we have here. And we, this, and we have the same here, thing here, except we have the, with the multiplication. So what is this sum? As I said, it's 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5, which is, and so on which is just the same as 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 8. And we know that uh, this thing, specifically like this here, this is equal to, I think we have seen the arithmetic sum formula before. So this is uh, 9 times 8, because we're going up to 8, divided by 2 which is equal to 36. Yes, I'm correct, 36. So, and that's just a constant. 
So then we have that, okay, this is, okay, the sum of eight, eight, seven, six, five, all the way down to one, all of them times 36. So we can just extract that in front. So we have 36 times the sum of where m goes from 1 to 8 of 9 minus m. And this thing, that's just the same because we're just changing the number variable. It doesn't make any difference. So this is just also 36. So our answer is 36 squared, which is equal to, uh, this should be 1,296. And if that number is correct, I'm uh, maybe bad counting, but that doesn't really, that doesn't really matter. You can look it up. We've, we've, we've done the process, okay? We've done the process. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so this is, this is the answer. And I can just recap the, the method real quick. So we just, what, what we just did is that we looked at, okay, we have what are all the possible shapes. And then we sum, use the sum for all the possible shapes. And each shape generates a number of rectangles based on, well, its shape or its di dimensions, I should say. And its dimensions restricted because uh, or it gives us a number of rectangles because it restricts in how many locations we can put the shape. So as I said before, if we have a really big shape, we can only put it like in so many, so many locations. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was it. Now we have the, the fun fact of a lifetime. There are 1,296 rectangles on a chessboard. And that was it. That was all for me. Thank you. Bye-bye.